Hi, this is Martin Drummond with Progressive News. It's uh, Friday, March 29th, 2019. You know, I don't know if the establishment Democrats, which Republican light is what they really are. They're really Republicans who took over our party in 1992 with the Democratic Leadership Council, Bill Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, I don't know if they actually planned this stuff out, but I think they did. I think that they are looking ahead and they're seeing that their coup in the Democratic Party is ending. The progressives understand that it was a coup. Uh, just like in Brazil, you had a legislative coup where the conservatives got a hold of the uh, legal system and they simply jailed the opposition, Lula. Well, here in the United States, they did it a little different way. Koch brothers, uh, whoever got together and funded a, uh, a Democrat, but a conservative Democrat. And remember that conservative Democrats have been trying to run our party forever. But they didn't have the... Well, anyway, either way, whether it's conservative Democrats or Republicans, in this case, Republicans did help fund uh, the Democratic Leadership Council, which were the ones who... Uh, it's the banner that the Clintons go under. And eventually Obama. Eventually Obama uh, more or less became their their guy. I was about to say boy. Sorry, black people, I didn't mean it that way. Um, I've used that word unracistly all my life. But now I have to <laughs> watch out. So anyway, um, okay, how about Bill, Cl Bill Clinton was their boy, you know? Um, so whether they're trying to or not, with this Russia collusion, Trump collusion bullshit, even though Trump is as corrupt as all get out, uh, they really sabotaged their chance of winning for sure. As a matter of fact, my suggestion at this point is that Bernie and... Uh, progressives really do have to run against the establishment Democrats. Just put them in, lump them all together. Just lump all these conservatives together, whether they're Democrat or Republican. I mean, I've always said that there ought to be two parties in this country, conservative and liberal, but I don't like the word liberal because there's too many nut jobs liberals, right? Uh, they ruin it for us. So we've got progressives. Progressives are like the ones who, uh, to differentiate them from liberals, we believe in the rights of people to be jackasses. You know, we, we believe in Republicans. They can, you know, mouth off all their bullshit and, and, and we believe in, uh, the rights of you know, nuts and and all kinds of deviants, you know, to to have their opinions. I mean, that doesn't mean they have a right to force their opinions upon anybody else, so. Uh, so, you know, while we believe in the rights of, uh, say, gay people, that doesn't mean that progressives necessarily, straight progressives certainly necessarily believe that being gay is right. Or to go further, uh, mutilate, you know, like in my case, I don't believe in, uh, and I certainly don't want to pay with my tax dollars for somebody to have their dick cut off and their balls cut off and make a fake vagina on themselves. To me, that's going too far. If somebody, that's like plastic surgery, you know? Unless it's really necessary. Uh, 
I don't believe in making other people pay for it. And that's going to become a universal health care issue, right? Because even if we have universal health care, it's going to have just like free speech has reasonable um, you know prohibitions um, limits okay um, I'm going to get into that some other time it'll probably have to do with them throwing me in jail they threw me in jail uh, really because they didn't like my opinion but uh, because they overheard me on a government line uh, you know to a government agency talking about how they make me feel which they make me feel like I want to kill one of them I mean that's just a fact right I mean and there's a lot of people who make me feel like I want to kill them it's just an instinct you know and that's all I was talking about or trying to talk about to my car cam when they overheard me over the phone because they had me on hold with the food stamp people so you know I mean if they'd convicted me and said well we're convicting you because you were stupid enough uh, to let us hear on a government phone line uh, you talk about how you want to kill um, government employees which I don't really want to kill government employees they just make me feel that way when they do something really mean to me I get that feeling right and that's what I was talking about so you know there's gonna be limits if they wanted to convict me on that and say well you were stupid enough to say something like even though all I was talking about was how they make me feel I wasn't talking about that I really want to I was just saying they make me feel like I want to and they do from time to time you know when I get angry really angry and legitimately angry I mean I don't know of any time that I've ever been angry illegitimately I suppose from time to time I think something that isn't true and I get get all angry about it but I've never even hit somebody you know because I have a defense mechanism I um, never do anything when I'm angry never act from time to time I might say something but I don't act and that's my my way of protecting possibly innocent people just like I don't believe in the death penalty unless you're absolutely sure so you don't just give out the death penalty because you're angry right you give out the death penalty because you have absolute you're absolutely sure you know this guy raped and murdered this little girl or whatever right so sure there's going to be limits on rights and progressives they're the kind of people who believe in that because you know what it makes sense I mean I can believe in the rights of gay people to, in their privacy of their home to do whatever they want right and I don't believe in the police dragging them off to jail over it which the police do or at least used to when I was in Houston I saw him come to an apartment complex I was at and uh, six o'clock in the morning they got two gay guys in in blankets putting them in police cars because somehow they found out that they were sleeping together and they went in and and, and arrested them now I don't think that happens very often anymore but mainly because people like me I was outraged I was outraged I mean I hate what they're doing it makes me sick inside I, I absolutely do not like homosexuality but I love homosexuals as people a lot of them are my best friends always were and in Houston there's a huge gay com community uh, I love their their life the way they they're alive so alive many of them and and so fun and uh, used to love to go to their parties you know and as a matter of fact I went to that uh, guy's party just within a couple of weeks of, of because he worked at a bar that me and my friends used to like to go to no it wasn't a gay bar it's called Harlow's it was really a straight bar anyway so 
you know, progressives are ruined by both sides. Establishment Democrats have now, you, you know, liberals, the ones that are way out there on the fucking left that jump on people's asses, uh, you know, the, the anarchists and all the crazy liberals, they ruin it on that side. But establishment Democrats, I think, I think the, the Clintons and these people, I think they're purposely, I think they realize, I think they see the writing on the wall that progressives are going to be in charge and they want to do as much damage before that happens as possible. It, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Here, let me show you this because this is what instigated the whole business. Let me pause this for a second. Side of the equation, Fox News is seeing a big bump. Now, especially for a direct competition at the 9 p.m. time slot, Sean Hannity, who has seen at least a 32% increase, uh, has enjoyed this type of revelation. To break it all down, we go to investigative journalist Ben Swan. Thanks for coming back with us, Ben. Yes, Scotty, thanks for having me on. Okay. Really this, with these guys, huh? I don't know if this is more of a reflection on the host of the show or the audience. Be Okay, I think this is an overreaction. I doubt seriously that uh, Republicans are going to get any huge boost. And one thing's for sure is that, uh, and we're certainly going to lay this on establishment Democrats' doorstep, is it's not going to do Democrats any good. And at this point... Bernie Sanders, well, let's put it this way. Here, here's somebody who is uh, <laughs> texting me who I don't know, so I'll use their, their text to show you what I'm talking about. So this meme that I like of uh, from Star Wars and Bernie Sanders help us Bernie Sanders you're our only hope <laughs> I made that so uh, at this point I think that's it though you know I mean it I mean first of all let me make it clear to you guys that uh, you y'all who want Tulsi and all these people bringing in all these different progressives, which is okay for now, but let's face it, Tulsi and even AOC and all the other progressives, some of them wonderful, beautiful progressives, they, they're they all just here because Bernie Sanders ran in 2016. I mean, if we hadn't gotten Bernie to run in 2016, Hillary would be president right now, and progressives would be probably a fleeting memory. Oh, remember when those progressives made a run, you know, with that uh, person, uh, John Smith, you know? <laughs> but because... Uh, and to be fair, we made a mistake and we went after uh, Elizabeth Warren to start out. But we should have been smart enough to know that she wasn't a true progressive. I mean, she's close. But let's face it, she's like Tulsi Gabbard. She comes from, you know, we don't want somebody from uh, a conservative background. Tulsi Gabbard was raised church-going Republican. And she embraced it. She went to Iraq to kill our enemies of 9-11. And you know what? That's what we did in Iraq and Afghanistan. We just killed anybody. Because <laughs> as far as we were concerned, it, they were all enemies. It was just a massive genocide as, as, uh, of revenge. That's all that it was. So she took part in that. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, Warren was a housewife, house turning. She used to flip houses, you know. So 
uh, that's where she, I mean, her business uh, experience, which later led her to becoming a an economist after she got her degrees and stuff. Uh, but she's just a typical, uh, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Oklahoma City, or whatever. And I don't know about you, but just like I said about Hillary Clinton, why? Why do we have to have her? Just because she's the wife of some douchebag president that we had that we thought was going to do things besides mass incarceration and uh, an entire population subservient to Walmart wages and, <laughs> you know, whatever. So I said, with all the people out there, why her? Well, the same thing should have occurred to me about Elizabeth Warren. I didn't know who Bernie Sanders was. I didn't know was there basically a communist. And for all of you people who still don't understand what communism is, let me clue you in for the last time probably. No, I'll probably continue to beat this into you because you're so fucking stupid. If you think that communism and fascism are the same thing, just because somebody points at Stalin or some or Castro who wasn't a fascist isn't a fascist well he, he's dead now but uh, his brother then. or Maduro you're nuts because all that communists are the one thing that all communists have in common whether they're assholes or they're nice people uh, like Bernie Sanders is a nice one all they care about I mean all that they have in common is that they see suffering, they see despair, and they feel like they, they, they feel empathy. That's all the communists are. Now, whether they want a uh, control economy, command and control economy, an economy that doesn't work on market forces, but works based on uh, people simply doing the math and deciding what to produce and then producing it and distributing it. Okay, whether they believe in that or they're nut jobs who believe in overthrowing governments and installing uh, some type of what they want to call communist dictatorship, uh, it really doesn't matter. All that really matters and Good communists, this is all that really matters to them. The other stuff, trying to do it in a vicious, horrible way that ends up in people dying and stuff. Um, you know, real communists don't believe that. Real communists are like Bernie Sanders. They grow up all their life. Um, if they have the time and the, the money, it does cost money. Then they'll go out and fight for rights. So he was involved with civil rights. He went down to Nicaragua when he was working in government to find out what was really going on, you know, about Iran-Contra and all that kind of shit. Um, you know, real communists, all they do is want to help poor people, want to end poverty. I mean, we want to end poverty. We don't believe in doing it overnight. Uh, we don't believe in doing it outside of the system. We believe in getting inside the system and changing it so that people like us aren't barred from participation, which is how they've kept us from from ending poverty. We would have ended poverty uh, with uh, sometime shortly after Kennedy probably because that was our goal. So, uh, so the, you know, you got the wrong idea about communists. We're not, we're not what you think you are. We are. We're very much, I'm a Democrat. Just because I believe in ending poverty and, uh, and a command and control economy doesn't make me a fascist. And I don't believe in either of them immediately. I believe they're a goal probably after, probably long after I die. We'll end poverty and get around to doing a command and control economy. 
Command and control economy makes a lot more sense. The only reason capitalism makes sense is because a bunch of capitalists has convinced you that it's in your interest. When really, they won't admit it, but it's in their interest. Now, um, back to this, because they really have ruined it for for Democrats, just for now. I mean, nothing's going to change. Everybody knows what a bunch of fuckheads and, and anybody who supports the Republicans, you know, the Mitch McConnells and all these assholes, they, they all know that they're just looking out after themselves. They know that they're saying, oh, uh, I'm going to vote for them because... I think that it's in my self-interest. I don't care that it hurts black people and minorities and uh, <laughs> even hurts like there's all this about DeVos, you know, the, this taking money away from the Special Olympics, even hurting, uh, uh, you know, um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank here. I had a girlfriend in a wheelchair <laughs> uh, hurting people in wheelchairs. There you go. Just one of those things. I, I'm sorry. So they don't care who they hurt. Whereas uh, progressive Democrats are exactly the opposite, right? They want to make sure that everybody gets help at least some help and then eventually complete help you know to whatever help they need I mean progressives are all about need obviously want comes after right I want a brand new Xbox 360 or whatever but I don't have one because I have to spend my money on what I need that's how it works in a capitalist system right and boy, they sure know how to pinch you in a capitalist system. I can't imagine that a communist system, a command and control system, would pinch people as hard as the capitalist system does. So, you know, you people who are afraid of communism versus capitalism, I think you got the I think you got it backwards. I think you're more likely to get things you want, fun stuff in a communist system than you are in a capitalist system. Okay, overall, from time to time, capitalism may work out really well for some people, but not for all the people. And you know what? It's so rude in what we call a nation. Because a nation is the one umbrella over all of us, right? I mean, we may be Muslims, or we may be Christians, or we may be communists or we may be progressives we may be republicans but we're all americans so i think when it comes to our wants and our needs that should be governed under the big umbrella but you know we have to convince all the people of that uh we still live in a country where apparently uh, most of the people are convinced that uh, using government to work in their own self-interest is more important. I think uh, that's part of what we're going to be up against in, uh, in the next election. I think progressives are going to have to convince people that their best interest is in us and the progressives. So let's listen to a little bit more of this and I'll see if there's something I want to comment on. Because is the Mueller report really right. the only reason why we are seeing such a spike for Fox and dips for MSNBC and other liberal, more liberal leaning media outlets? Well, I, I think I think it is a, a big part of it. Look, consider the fact that for over the last two years, it's two years plus, right? Uh, networks like MSNBC and CNN have been pushing this narrative of Russian collusion, that President Trump was a Russian spy, that he was working with Vladimir Putin and actually serving at the behest of Vladimir Putin. They have have been. Yeah, I mean, see, they make us the. 
establishment Democrats, corporate Democrats, have made Democrats look like conspiracy theorists. When really, up till now, the only real conspiracy theorists were Republicans. You know, the Trump types who believed in, you know, somehow Obama was not an American. <laughs> you know, stupid shit like that. Because the left wing, their conspiracy theories were real. You know, it's pretty obvious that there was a cover-up of an assassination of Kennedy. It's pretty obvious that uh, the SNL scandal was really um, the neocons stealing money, robbing banks, ba basically, to fund their own uh, covert operations like Nicaragua and Contras and stuff. So our conspiracy <laughs> theories were real, but they've... They so demonized us, people who have the nerve to say that, oh, Oswald was a patsy, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing, that I won't even call myself a conspiracy theorist. I call myself a, a conspiracy researcher, because that's what I did. I researched it, and I came to my own conclusions. And the only real nut jobs out there were pretty much Republicans with their wacky right wing conspiracies. Well, there's some possible, I don't know whether they're left wing or right wing, the flat earthers and people who believe in ghosts and people who believe in aliens. You know, there's no evidence, absolutely no evidence that were being visited by aliens or anything like that. So, but I, I suspect most of that is right wing. But I don't know. I suppose there's left wing and right wing crazies out there. But they've made us look like we're crazy. The establishment Democrats, this two years of this nonstop, like he said, Bush or Trump is a Russian spy. Uh, you know, even if it were true, what would it matter? He's still president of the United States, unless he tomorrow were to come out and say, well, um, I'm disbanding the American military and allowing the Russian military to come to the United States and, and protect us. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, what could he do even if he were a Russian, well, Russian-owned? Let's say that secretly he's Russian-owned. <laughs> what the fuck could he do? He couldn't do anything. And he's certainly not doing anything. I mean, he's uh, opposing Russia in Venezuela. He's opposing Russia in Syria. Uh you know, a couple more years of him, or a year and a half, it's not even a year and a half now. Uh, well, yeah, it is. He, he doesn't have, he, he will not be able to, okay, anyway, that's so nutty anyway. I mean, Trump is a, a typical American guy, he's not owned by the Russians. Uh, but they've made us look stupid, right? I mean, first of all, they didn't control the investigation. They let this... Uh, the FBI's notoriously been uh, against the American people all of its existence. The Bush pra Bushes practically ran the FBI when they ran the CIA. Um, you know, so at any... Any turn in this little saga, the establishment Democrats have done just what you'd expect them to do if they were a covert coup against real Democrats, progressive Democrats. They've sabotaged us all the way. But how can they? How can they sabotage us? They can't really, right? Because we don't. We haven't been participating in this 
Mueller thing. I don't think. Not in spirit in any way. You know, uh, according to what I've seen. So, you know, we have to let the chips fall where they may because where the chips are going to fall is the establishment Democrats are going to look like idiots. So we just hang this on their doorknob and walk away and say, hey, <laughs> wasn't our, our deal. Uh, you look at all the progressive media, none of us participated in it. You, you, if you watch uh, Mike Figueredo on the Humanist Report, uh, Kyle Kalinsky, me, uh, uh, you know, Rational National, anything progressive, which we are really the progressive news, you know, uh, we didn't, we didn't, uh, go after Trump. I mean, are, we're not as concerned, at least I, I know I'm not concerned with Trump. I know that if we just mind our own business and uh, take out the corporate Democrats, put Bernie in... Uh, now it's 10 o'clock, 29th of March, 2019. <laughs> I installed some voice software. I don't know how to turn it off. Anyway, so um, if we just do that, you know, win the presidency, uh, we'll, well, that's it, we'll beat Trump. Well, we're, and, and you know what, I mean, at this point, <laughs> with the, the establishment Democrats having done this, Bernie is their only choice, is our only choice, is the Democratic Party's only choice. I mean, the rest of the establishment Democrats, uh, they don't have 2016, you know, they don't have that history behind them. They wouldn't even be here, like I said, if it wasn't for 2016 and Bernie's run. So why would we even think about trying to run somebody else against Trump? I mean, you're taking a big chance, just like taking, just like backing Hillary in 2016 and making her the nominee was a huge, huge risk. And now you want to maybe do that again by putting a Tulsi Gabbard or Elizabeth Warren instead of Bernie. Bernie is obviously the guy. And I don't say that just because, like, women and establishment Democrats were like, oh, well, it's her turn. No, I say that because in 2016, he should have beaten Hillary. He should have uh, beaten Trump. Or as I show in some of my other memes... Bernie would have won. Man, you slow piece of shit. <laughs> so, um, you know, it makes no sense. And like I say, I'm not doing that from the position of, uh, like, Hillary, Hill trolls, you know, Hillary supporters were doing. Like, oh, it's just her turn because we say so. No. I have a lot of reasons. As a matter of fact, I don't do anything without a reason, and usually a lot of reasons. And in this case, I have a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons to su support Bernie over, uh, you know, Yang or Tulsi or Warren or anybody. So, that's my two cents. <laughs> Was I gonna listen to a little bit more? Pushing of this? this narrative, and it's become increasingly insane over the last two and a half years. Then the audience that comes to them only goes to them because they say, "Come on, give me, give me some more, give me some more. Promise me, keep promising me." 
and then the networks keep promising. And it's this cycle that they've gone through, and now all of a sudden it's over. All of a sudden they find out that these things weren't true, and so the audience has kind of thrown Rachel Maddow to the side, thrown MSNBC to the side. Uh, you know, 500,000 fewer people from one night to the next were watching Rachel Maddow's program. That's an enormous drop in viewers. Meanwhile, as you said... Yeah, and they're running to Fox News. Well, that shows how unfair the media is in this country. Obviously, they are not, not aware of all the progressive media on YouTube. And 50% of Americans don't even have the Internet. So they're probably poor people, right? Because the Internet costs money. Uh, I think part of the progressive platform should be that everybody should have internet and they should be aware of the progressive media the progressive media on the internet that they weren't able to see uh, you know if everybody was able to tune in every day to my new news, uh, my YouTube playlist. What a different country this would be, right? What a totally different country. Let's see if... If everybody in the country were able to get on here. And let's just pick a playlist. Okay, here's from the 27th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Admittedly, they'd have to listen to a lot of stupid ads, but they'd get on here. I think it's evident that successful primary challenges to corporate Democrats like Joe Crowley, it absolutely terrified the Democratic Party establishment. Because if they see that there's this new insurgent left and they're successful at taking... So the Democratic establishment is promising to screw the left yet again. This is in The Intercept. They say the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee warned political strategists and vendors Thursday night that if they support candidates... So, so this is where our country is all fucked up, right? I mean, this is the news that people should be getting. This is the truth. Uh... People who still back corporate Democrats, uh, Hillary Clinton ex-supporters, or they're still her supporters, I suppose, but I don't think uh, they think that she's going to run. So obviously they're looking at Kamala Harris and whoever. But that's because they're completely uneducated. If they got to watch all these new segments you know they would no longer back establishment Democrats because establishment Democrats don't truly back all the progressive issues it wouldn't take but, uh, you know, a little while of people watching news like this, you know. For them to understand that progressives are reality based while establishment Democrats and Republicans are self-interestedly based I guess is the word <laughs> self-interestedly <laughs> it's hard to even say well look at those houses up there wouldn't you like to have one of those <laughs> anyway so uh, you know I mean I heard Joe Rogan and Kyle Kalinske talking about this earlier this morning about how it's not just 
uh, the fact that everybody doesn't get to vote, but also the fact that the people who do vote don't have the information they need to make a proper decision. And that's because they don't get to watch our shows. And I show, I include Joe Rogan here from time to time, gardening, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of shit in here. But it's all progressive, I think, at least from my point of view, and I think I have a pretty good idea of what is or isn't progressive. I'm not saying all progressives are always right 100% of the time. Uh, I certainly don't agree with them all the time on everything. Uh, usually, basically, I do. But there may be parts of what they believe that I'm like, hmm, I don't know about that. So I think that's normal, right? Don't you? And everything that's progressive news isn't necessarily directly progressive. I mean, I think progressives should be aware of the news. So, U.S. tests new missile defense shield, takes down ICBM. I think it's important to know who's doing what, because that's part of the, uh, the bragging rights of progressives, is that they're reality-based. They don't wear blinders, you know, when making their decisions or formulating their opinions. So I want to know what kind of weapons Russia and the United States and the world are testing because it tells me how they're spending their money and what kind of uh, what they're working on, which gives me an insight into their minds as to their fears and what the, their perceived needs, things like that. Okay, so this is Martin Drummond with Progressive News. Thanks for watching.